I was gonna wear a Leafs hat, but I am ashamed of the, the team at the moment. If you're a Mac user, you've no doubt gotten very used to that command space shortcut to bring up Spotlight, because unlike things like Windows Search, Spotlight is actually good. But what if I told you there's something better? Something that clears Spotlight and pretty much every other Spotlight alternative on Mac that is out there and does all of that while being 100% free. Because there is an alternative and that alternative is Raycast. I've been using Raycast since I bought my first Mac back in June or July last year. And honestly, I don't know how I ever lived without it for that week or two where I didn't have it. Raycast keeps all of the features of Spotlight that you're used to, like file search and searching apps, while adding tons of new functionality through their extensions. And unlike other Spotlight alternatives, the vast majority of Raycast is 100% free to use, excluding the AI features, which just hear me out, I'll get into those later. Installing Raycast is just like any other Mac app, really. Just go to the website and download it, do the whole, you know, open the disk image, drag the application into the applications folder. If you're smart and you don't do that, you can also use Homebrew to install Raycast by typing brew install dash dash cast Raycast. You'll need to do all the things like allowing full disk access for file search and allowing accessibility for keyboard shortcuts. And you'll also need to perform the steps to disable Spotlight Search from Command Space. Raycast guides you through replacing Spotlight, but it essentially boils down to just turning off the keyboard shortcut for Spotlight and setting Raycast to use Command and Space. Once you've got it set up, Raycast is as easy to use as Spotlight. When you hit Command Space, you're greeted with a list of your recent apps and a couple of built-in extensions. By default, Raycast can run and search programs, search your files with the file search extension and run Siri shortcuts, which is really cool. Raycast has a wide range of extensions built in before you even think about touching the store. Things like conversions, a calculator, window management, system control, and even confetti. Unfortunately, one thing I've noticed about Raycast is it can't dynamically search like Spotlight can. When you're in Spotlight, if you search an app, the app comes up. If you search for a file, the file comes up. And if you search for a web result, that comes up immediately as well. In Raycast, if you search for an app, a shortcut, or an extension, that comes up fine straight away. But if you're searching for a file, you'll need to hit enter to go to the file search option, which is just, it's, it's a bit of a barrier. Oh, and the rich results that come from, say, searching a movie or actor in Spotlight, as far as I can tell, don't exist in Raycast at all. While personally, they're not deal breakers for me, I would love to see these features implemented into Raycast in the future. Now, during the creation of this video, I was also in contact with the CEO and co-founder of Raycast, Thomas Paul Mann. So I was able to ask him a couple of questions and I ended up asking him about rich results in Raycast and whether they would be added. And here's what he said. Unsure. We want to keep the root search in Raycast snappy. Waiting for rich results to load isn't up to our standards. That said, we might add richer UI elements to the root search. However, if they are really a problem for you, you don't have to just completely get rid of Spotlight. You can use Raycast and Spotlight simultaneously. I think F4 is by default a Spotlight search command and you can't change that. So you could have Raycast on command space and Spotlight search on F4 for when you need it. Now the extension store is what really sets Raycast apart from the competition. Raycast allows pretty much any developer to create new functionality for Raycast with some notable extensions being controlled for Spotify and Apple Music, tab and bookmark management for basically every major browser and even Home Assistant Control. One of the extensions I use the most is not very exciting. It's just a basic word count extension. It's really helpful when I'm writing in apps that don't have a word counter like Apple Notes or TickTick, -Tick, which I also do have a video on. Another one of my personal favorites, which I think a lot of you guys will enjoy as well, is the clipboard history extension. It, this should seriously be core functionality at this point in Mac and on iPhone. All it does is just add a clipboard history, which Windows, Android, Linux, etc already have built in. How probably free BSD at this point. Many popular Mac apps also have extensions built for them. Cleanshot X has an extension for taking screenshots, screen recordings, and managing the other aspects of the app straight from your keyboard. The graphic designers in my audience might appreciate the Google Fonts extension, which allows you to search for and find uh, alternative fonts for your next project. And the developers in my audience might appreciate the GitHub, VS Code, and other IDE extensions that are available. If you're big on the whole second brain thing, extensions for Notion and Obsidian MD might be helpful for you. The list for supported apps just keeps on going. And it's a real testament to what an app of this scale can do when developers are given this much transparency and openness. There's some other extensions too, not just for apps, some that are standalone. Things like Google Translate, OpenAI generation for GPT-3 and DALI, along with an extension to run terminal commands right from Raycast. It's really helpful stuff 
and I highly recommend checking out their extension store. I'm going to quickly rapid fire some other extensions I found making this video. Floating Notes gives you a floating window for notes. YouTube lets you search YouTube channels and videos. The Homebrew extension lets you install and manage homebrew apps. The Tailscale extension lets you manage your Tailscale devices. I also asked Thomas from Raycast some questions about extensions as well. I asked what some of the team's most used extensions were, and he linked to a thread which mentioned extensions like the GitLab extension, port manager to kill services based on ports, and Ray.so for generating cool code screenshots. I also asked him what he thought the most creative extensions were, and he said a lot of the game extensions, things like Snake. Now, I'm sure you're not really looking forward to hearing about more AI today. I'm sure there's been many pieces of major news that have come out within at least the last hour, seeing as how fast it's moving, but just hear me out for a second. Raycast AI is one of my favorite features of this app, and it's been honestly one of my most used features since I've gotten access. At its core, it's just GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. You can pick and choose which one you want, but the optimization and integration with Raycast that they have added makes it a lot faster and much better to use over ChatGPT. First and foremost, it becomes a lot easier to access. No more opening your browser, typing in chat.openai.com, whatever. It's literally just hit command space, type in your question, and hit tab to immediately get an AI-generated result. If you want a more ChatGPT-like experience, you can hit command J from that screen where you've hit tab, or you can just open up the AI chat extension. Where Raycast AI really gets interesting is where Raycast AI really gets interesting is with AI commands. You can make Raycast modify any of your highlighted text on your system with just one keyboard shortcut or just typing the name of a command into the Raycast search box. With one user-defined shortcut, you could make text more readable, change the style of a text, or even summarize it, which is what I'll demonstrate here. Setting up an AI command is as easy as just typing create AI command into to the Raycast search box. Type in the name of the command that you want to set it as. In this case, I'll just do summarize text and then type in what you want the AI model to do to the text in the box below it. In this case, I'll just, again, write summarize this text. Hypothetically, you could use it to do much more advanced things, but I can't think of anything right now. You can change how creative you want the AI to be as well, which could be useful for commands that generate ideas. Now you can summarize any piece of text by just highlighting it and telling Raycast to summarize it. If you want to get really advanced with it, you can set a keyboard shortcut by going to the Raycast preferences from the menu bar icon and setting it there. I've personally set summarize text to option S on my system. I have noticed that some of the commands aren't that great. If It's mainly designed for changing text, and if you want to go outside of that scope, your results will vary heavily. I would also love to see some integration with Raycast extensions, similar to ChatGPT's plugin feature. If Raycast AI had access to the internet for up-to-date answers or could manage my window layout for me, it could seriously take the usefulness from Raycast AI like uh, up by a lot. And I can imagine some of the smarter people in the audience could think of much more creative ways to use this feature. So if you have one of those, let me know in the comments. Even without those two features, Raycast AI is insane. It's honestly something that I would download as a standalone app, even not even considering all of the other fantastic features that Raycast can add. Raycast AI is currently locked behind a waitlist and will be charging a monthly subscription once it's publicly available. I was lucky enough to be granted early access to Raycast AI to make this video. However, Raycast is not seeing this video in advance and is not telling me to say anything good or bad about the product. I'm not being paid except for, I guess, access to Raycast AI. But really, I just encourage you to try it out. There's no way I can cover every single person's workflow in this one video. And I seriously think that if you went and tried it out, you wouldn't be able to live without it if you're anything like me. If you like this video, uh, hit like. If you didn't, don't hit like, uh, hit subscribe if you want. I make videos like this. Um, that's about it. See ya.